When it comes to basketball coaches, you expect them to have their head on straight and to be relatively stable for the most part. Like for instance, a coach working with little kids should be fun, energetic, and should always make the kid feel like he's doing a good job. But as they get older, that's when you should begin to be a little harder on them. You know, push them a little farther, so they can eventually develop the mentality of a winner. Now, playing in college, that's when you're officially a grown man, and you should be treated like one. You don't get a free pass, you don't get a band-aid every time you get a scrape. You don't really get to sit there and complain. You have to be an adult and handle your business. And the coaches are expected to get on your ass when you make a mistake. And they should act a little crazy. But the coach I'm going to talk about is a completely different animal. One that makes other coaches look like the host for a children's TV show. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor, would you be mine? Hey, don't touch me, bitch! Bob Knight. I'm sure you all have heard of him at least some point in your life, and maybe even seen a few clips of his outrageous antics. In a, in a of course, progress, progress that we've made. God damn it! Fuck this show. Take this show and forget it. Forget it. But many of you probably haven't heard of those stories behind those aggressive outbursts. And that's what I'm going to share with you guys today. So grab some snacks and enjoy. Alright, so don't get me wrong. Bob Knight has not always been bad. He's actually one of the most legendary coaches of all time. He's coached for several decades and is best known for his time with the Indiana Hoosiers. He led the 1975-76 team to an undefeated season and won the 76 NCAA tournament, which was the last team to accomplish such a feat. He won the gold medal with the men's Olympic team in 1984. He was named the Naismith College Coach of the Year in 87. He's won a grand total of 902 NCAA Division I games, which is currently third all time. He was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 1991. He was also very innovative by polarizing the motion offense. Oh yeah, and he once coached Coach K, who went on to be a Hall of Fame coach himself. So with all these outstanding accomplishments, it still leaves us scratching our heads. Why did he choose to make national headlines so often involving his controversial behavior? Some people call it a short fuse, and others call it flat out unstable. Let's start off in the early 70s. It was reported that he once punched the Indiana University's sports information director over a news release that he was not too pleased about. In 1974, Indiana vs Kentucky, it was the end of the game when Bob went over to the Kentucky bench to complain about a call to the referee, and on the way back to his bench, he slapped the Kentucky coach Joe Hall on the back of the head. Joe Hall later said, I was humiliated. Bob Knight would respond by saying, I slap my players all the time, get over it. Next, we have to go back to 1960. Olympic gold medalist Doug Bluebaugh, who was the head wrestling coach at Indiana University, would often like to go for jogs around the basketball practice facility. And one time during practice, Knight yelled for him to effing leave. Douglas then pinned Bob Knight to the wall and told him to never say that again, which he never did. 1985, in a game versus Purdue, just five minutes into the game, two of his players were called for early fouls, but Bob believed they should have both been a jump ball. Bob eventually received a technical foul, so Steve Reed of Purdue stepped to the line to shoot the technical free throws, and that's when Bob Knight famously picked up a red plastic chair and threw it across the court, right in front of the free throw line, and obviously he was ejected from the game. The next morning, he jokingly tried to explain that he saw an old lady standing up, so he threw her the chair so she can sit down. But nobody found the joke that funny and was suspended for one game. 1991, another incident involving Purdue. The team was at a late practice, so in effort to motivate the team who were about to face Purdue the next day, Bob would give them a very intense speech. And it just so happens, somebody secretly recorded it. Now, hey, I'm tired of this shit. I'm sick and f***ing tired of an 8 and 10 record. I'm f***ing tired of losing to Purdue. I'm not here to f*** around this week. Now you may be, 
but I'm not. Now I'm going to f***ing guarantee you that if we don't play up there Monday night, you ain't going to believe the next four f***ing days. Now I am not here to get my f***ing beat on Monday. Now you better f***ing understand that right now. This is absolute f***ing bullshit. Now I'll f***ing run your ass right in the ground. I mean, I'll f***ing run you. You'll think last night was a f***ing picnic. I had to sit around for a f***ing year with an 8 and 10 record in this f***ing league. And I mean, you will not put me in that f***ing position again. Or you will goddamn pay for it like you can't f***ing believe. Now you better get your head out of your It is still unknown who secretly released the audio. 1992, another incident took place during practice. For some reason, the team wanted to give Bob a gift, and strangely, they gifted him with a bull whip. So Bob decided to playfully whip some of his players just for fun, with no intent to harm them. But when news released that this had happened, several black leaders complained that there were racial connotations tied to the act because one of the players that was being whipped happened to be black and it wasn't a good look at all. In 1997, and yes, you guessed it, it was during practice, a video was released of Bob Knight aggressively grabbing the neck of Neil Reed, and rumors spread that this was nothing new. It was something that happened on a regular basis. The next one involves two of his former players who were being interviewed on CNN. They revealed that one time, Knight showed him a pile of his own feces, holding it in his hand, and simply said, this is how you guys are playing. Now this last one took place in the late 80s. Another one of his former players, Todd Jadlow, came out and said that Bob once broke a clipboard over his head and squeezed his testicles. <laughs> Man, dealing with him as a head coach doesn't seem like much fun at all. Now before you guys leave, I just want to say that this video isn't meant to really diminish his legacy at all. He's still one of the most iconic coaching figures in basketball history, but many agree that he brought this on himself and has to accept the fact that his reputation will always be attached to his angry episodes. So now I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you would have done if you were a victim of Bob Knight's antics. Make sure to comment down below and please like and subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.